Have you ever painted with one of these? Then you can make an oil painting. Most of us have painted in some way in our lives. Even if you've only ever used the grade school set, um, you understand more than you think when it comes to painting. In some ways, it's all the same. It's about adding a liquid to some color with the brush and then applying it to a canvas. It's really not that different, so don't psych yourself out. Brushes. Paint. Medium and paint thinner. Palette. Canvas. Paper towels. Palette knife, easel, powdered staghorn, and a drop of blood from your enemies. Stay tuned to the end of this video where you can find out how to win the painting that I make in just a moment. While oil paint is thick, it's not the hardened ovals of first grade. And, you know, you can just lay it on and you can do that directly from the tube, you know, and some people do that too. They just use it just as it is. The best way to apply it still is with a thinner. And the thinner is called a medium uh, in fancy art talk. It's much like water is for watercolor, um, only the oil paint thinner is uh, solvent and so it breaks down the oils like water would break down these water soluble colors. It essentially thins the paint body. It improves the flow out of the brush. So I'm gonna take a quick moment and show you what it looks like if you just take a brush and use oil paint just as it is onto the canvas. That way you can see the difference between using medium and not using medium and see the purpose behind having uh, some medium, some sort of thinner to thin down your paint. Here we go. So there's just a couple strokes to see about how far the paint goes. If I dip a little more oil, a little more of the thinner for the oil in this, into the paint, my stroke goes a little farther than here, rather than getting caught up all the thick paint gets caught up and is lost. And we don't go very far. We've got nice thick coverage up top, but it drops away very quickly. Whereas with the thinner, we get to pull it a lot farther down, but we notice it is thinner, right? We don't have the same opacity here up top. Mediums are generally a mixture consisting of a solvent and a certain type of oil. There are a million options out there, and I'll talk about those in a future video. If you're just starting out, take it easy on yourself. Buy a bottle of pre-mixed oil painting medium. But beware when using solvents. Some have VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and will even say to use ventilation. Even products that claim to be odorless can still contain petroleum, distillates, or other other chemicals that are just not good to breathe in. So take heed, use ventilation if that's what you're gonna use. There's no right amount of medium to use. It's more about finding a comfortable consistency. You can see here that I've created something that goes down pretty easily here. Pretty smooth, the viscosity is really nice. And you can really play with that. This is, this is a bit of a personal feel thing. Find, find a way for you to be able to apply the oil 
but so that it feels right. You can do it thicker with more paint body or more thinner. The painting might need more of a semi-transparent wash or it might need a opaque color layer. My recommendation is to just paint some squares and feel what it's like to use a lot or a little of the solvent or the paint thinner. I'm gonna show that for a couple minutes. Let's try first a lot of thinner. This would be more of a wash. We just keep dipping and right now it's very fluid. You can see just, it's just wet. It's just really watery. Um, and you can see how thin it will go on this way. Very clear, look, we can just keep moving. I can keep covering. We're getting a lot of coverage. It's really improving the flow of the paint. Let's uh, make it a little thicker. Let's say we need the paint to give us more coverage and not let as much of the canvas show through. So we can still use some thinner, uh, but we're gonna get deeper into the paint body here. We can still get a lot of flow. And because we're working with oils, I've got my, my thick marks here. I can even take a little thinner and work with it right 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 from right from where those are the big thing is is just to play around feel what lots of thinner just a little bit of thinner feels like no thinner what does the paint feel like without any until you get comfortable working with those ratios be careful though if you use too much thinner you're going to you're going to see it begin dripping. That can offer some cool effects, but if I don't spread it out enough, you know, eventually we're going to start dripping down. And I'll just I'll leave that uh, so you can kind of see see what see what happens there. Eventually, it's going to give way because it can't take the gravity if you use so much. And you're going to watch the thinner actually break down some of the paint, and it can create some neat effects if that's what you're going for. Um, but uh, in representational painting, it may not be helpful. All right, I know I just put down color, but I'm gonna ask you, if it's your first time using oils, to not worry about color. I only did that because I thought it'd be a little easier to see what was happening. So, before you just dive in with color, I'd recommend just getting titanium white and ivory black. This will also save you some initial startup costs as well. Starting off with just value, which is value means, anytime I use the word value, it'll mean uh, light and dark, light and dark. Just one, one attribute of color, value. What Relative lightness, relative darkness. Is very valuable just to start off with just these two. I mean, I know like a lot of times we think, hey, you know, I, I can handle it. I, I see the way you put it down. I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. Um, but it just, it just begins to get really complex quickly when you add color. When, if you can just focus on, hey, is it lighter or is it darker? That's a great start. It's nice because there's only two tubes of paint. You only have two ways that you really need to go. Let's talk for a second why value is most important. First of all, value alone is the most important part of representational painting, meaning it is the most effective attribute of color when it comes to capturing what you see. It's what our eyes make out the most easily. In fact, Graydon Parrish, a very amazing painter, he says, if you get that right, you basically have it. Take a look at these two pictures. The first one, I've removed all color. So you can see, essentially, this is a black and white photo of a woman. We can readily make out what's happening. We understand how her face is modeled in the light. If we had to guess how she worked spatially, it would make perfect sense. Now I'm gonna show you a picture where I tried to remove all value. It's kind of an impossible task, but I did so anyway, I tried. 
So take a look at this picture where I removed value from the equation and tried to keep everything the same lightness and darkness, only including color. As you can see, this is really confusing. We don't know what's happening spatially, and it's a little frightening. It's, it's, it's unsettling. So please, just focus on value first. Trust me, you'll gain the most from starting there. If you're just getting started and you try to use lots of color, you're probably gonna become frustrated quickly because you know we painted this minutes ago it's still completely wet. So if I take my brush and I just go over it, everything is still really wet and it's gonna move around on you. So it's a really good idea to just start really simply. Trust me, this limitation will help you out in the long run. You're just getting used to this always wet feel and if you start adding a lot of colors, it turns into mud very quickly. Another great way to practice getting used to the feel of oils is to just mix them. So, I mentioned earlier, just starting off with white and black. So let's put a little bit of white, titanium white. It's a good white, there's a lot of whites out there. Don't worry about it, just pick up a tube of titanium. We can have a long video later about uh, the different kind of whites. There's also a lot of blacks out there. Don't worry about it. Just pick up ivory black and, and work with it. All right, grab your favorite palette knife and we're just gonna mix some values here. I've made a value strip that you see here that just has uh, percent gradients uh, of value. So starting with the zero white, ending with 100% value black. And it's a great practice to just look at each of these and mix them and have piles of color. One of the reasons this is valuable is that you get to learn just how much paint it takes to shift something. Since we're dealing with things that are so wet, it's good to know how much paint it's gonna to take to shift it closer to what we're trying to achieve. So if we have something laid out that's a 30%, but it's really a, a 60% value, then we'll say, okay, I need to add about this much black in order to end up right here. Anyhow, Let's mix up some color and you can kind of see how oil paint reacts. Okay, for this next move, I am just gonna grab some random amounts just to see where we end up on our, on our chart here, on our value chart. Okay, I've made a nice value there. Let's just see where it ends up. Sometimes you have to just bring it next to, getting pretty close there. When in doubt, you can pick it up, put it next to the other one, Let's see. You see, oh, that one's maybe a little darker, so in here somewhere. Let's try another mix. Ends up looking very similar, just maybe just a tad darker. Obviously, we're gonna have to grab a lot more black. We could even just take the black and what we already have here, some of what we already have on the knife, some that's already on the palette, and just mix it in. We don't even have to add white this time. Let's see where we end up. Here, here-ish. Let's just do that again. You can see how I have not added any more white. Uh, I've just continued to take some of the black. And it's taken Quite a long time. You, you would think, oh, you always need to be mixing. But we can continue to use what's out here. So we've made uh, some nice ranges of values. It's good, to, just good to practice. It's also good to practice and then compare it to a value strip just to see you know, how close am I coming to capturing the values that I see. This is a great exercise. Consider it, uh, if you were playing the piano, this is like doing scales. This is something that the more you do, the more you'll see it when you're painting. It's just good exercise. Let's see if we can't make something in the 50 range by, you can see I just broke off part of it uh, because I knew if I, di if I uh, dipped into this, I would also have something that would just kind of go too dark. And it still did so. So it was good to end up not even using that. A good 50, 50% value. So if we were trying to make a black and white painting, we would already have 
our colors mixed and ready. And you could take a look at a photo or something you were working from that was essentially a white or black object and, and work your way through these gradients on, on the canvas when you're recreating it. To clean a brush, you're just gonna simply take an odorless mineral spirits of some kind. Again, beware of your VOCs. Um, there are other options out there and I'll be sharing those in another video. But just take your brush, try to rake out as much paint as you can with the, with the paper towel. Try to pull out about as much as you can. And then, you know, you can soften and slowly remove some of that color. It's not perfect. Uh, you're still gonna have some color remaining. So if I do this, you're, you're still gonna see something. Um, so there's still color in the brush, even if you clean it. And also now there's a lot of thinner in the brush too. One of my favorite things is really just simply to uh, rake the brush clean with, with a paper towel rather than using mineral spirits. I don't know, it's just my method. It's something that I've tried to do in trying to lower the amount of VOCs in my home. If you are completely done painting and you're ready to put this away, you wanna to try to use your thinners to get out as much paint as you can. And then with the rest, um, I recommend just a little bit of soap. You can even buy brush soap uh, just to kind of just get out the rest, try to stroke um, the brush like, you know, along, along the ways, don't kind of jab at or do anything crazy, otherwise you're gonna begin to lose your brush shape. Um, but just slowly uh, use some of, the, uh, some of the suds to just kind of work its way out. And then just pinch and pull, clean it again, again until it's as clear as possible when you uh, pinch and pull out. And then just set it to the side and let it dry. I'm gonna remove the value strip and uh, take it just to the side for the moment. So you can see our, our values that we have laid out. I'm gonna apply them to the canvas just beside one another so you can see just how, they, how I might be able to lay them down. So this is a rough abstraction we're gonna put down first initially just so you can get a feel for it. So again, just getting a little bit of thinner and we'll, uh, we'll start with the dark. And again, I've gotten used to my feel that I enjoy when it comes to painting. Uh, this is just the right viscosity for me. I just use just a little bit of thinner. I don't use all that much. Uh, a little bit of medium, I should say. And uh, it just feels just right and I, I get to lay it down. If I use the same brush, you know, I could either totally clean it out or I could kind of use it as it is for me if I just do this, that's gonna be just fine. And I'm gonna take the next lightest value. There's still medium in the brush here. And I'm just gonna lay it next beside, but there's not enough medium. You can see how I didn't quite get coverage there. So I can just dip in just a little bit. And now you can see the values beside each other. Let's just do it again every time. Subtle. And your last one, which was basically the same. And each of those would be fine just like that. You know, I, I painted over the other just slightly, um, but didn't really go too far. And I was able to just kind of set the one next to the other. And this is a way we can begin thinking about our gradations when we go to actually making an oil painting. Okay, when it comes to oils being always wet, everything we've done here so far is still completely movable and is subject to having a little bit of medium added to it. If, if some of these areas that were really thin have dried, just a little bit of medium would immediately move them again. Uh, there's a lot of paint and a lot of medium here, so this is still really wet. Part of the difficulty with oil and one of the things that people really get most frustrated about is the fact that if you wanna change this area to white, you're not gonna be able to do it at this point. And um, even if I take 
and I get a nice big glob of white here and I just start. As you can see, uh, I, I didn't achieve white. Uh, I achieved a mixture because it's still moving, it's still mixing. And there's really nothing much I can do about that. I can attempt by means of a very thick impasto as kind of a last ditch effort to try to barely rake across and achieve that. But here's the thing, it's still wet all the way through. I can't move that at all, otherwise the gray, everything will, will keep moving too. That's really why people get most frustrated with oils and think that they're difficult. And I just wanna say that uh, because it keeps moving, you just, you just have to work with that. At any time, you can wipe things out by just taking some of your mineral spirits, your paint thinner, your brush cleaner, uh, just getting it on your paper towel and, and just wiping out. Now, now, you're not going to achieve a perfect, you know, clean, you know, cleanness. We've got, we've got a little bit left over here, but for the most part, we're back to square one and we can begin again. Wipe it out a little more. And now I could be able to go back in and say, well, that area was, was supposed to be white, so I'm gonna lay the white in. My brush was dirty, so you gotta forgive me. But that then allows us to do things uh, we weren't gonna be able to do otherwise with all that wetness there. And that's okay. Uh, sometimes that's what it takes. When things go really wrong, just a quick reset. You could do that for the whole thing. You know, at any point, we could take this thinner and, and begin cleaning to a certain degree. If we keep using clean paper towels and more and more thinner, we could completely remove all of this. You can always start over. I think that's the most important thing about oils. You can always begin again. And uh, with fresh brushes that are clean, you know, if you've washed them in your mineral spirits and you've raked them out, or you've went to a new brush, you can begin again fresh in areas that you have, uh, have, you, have you wiped out. So remember, you can always start over. Let's say you completely wiped it out, you've still got some color left, or you were like, hey, I kinda like this part. Um, if nothing else, you can always let oil dry. So depending on how much oil paint you put down, depending on how much thinner, is there what type of thinner, what type of oil in the mixture, what type of medium you use, there's a lot of factors. If everything goes wrong, you can just let it dry and come back to it. Sometimes that can take as little as a day, depending on what you use for your materials, and sometimes upwards to two weeks, it just depends. One of the nice things about it is you're gonna be able to go back on top of what you have. You can just paint directly on top of it. And that's one of the great things about oil. Yeah, there's some subtle rules, um, but right now, don't worry about all those. If it dries, you can paint back on top, it's okay. We're gonna mix a few values, again, just like we did earlier. It's great practice, I've got my my value strip up here. That way we'll have a couple pools and we'll be ready to tackle the cast here, just using black and white. See if I can't get a nice 50% gray. Kind of hold it up and see, yeah, we're, we're about there. Again, I can leave what's there, add a little bit of black to that since we're really only using two tubes of paint. It's really easy to shift it. You know, I could be intentional and really try to get the next one, the next one, the next one. Um, but it's also fun to play and see what happens. Make sure you keep playing and enjoy the process so that it doesn't get too 
too serious. As with life, can't take things too serious. Pretty good, 80% there. having to use a lot of paint. I mean, you saw how much white I just picked up and added to that pile. And really that brought me back to about a 50. You know, if I compare it, it's even a little darker than 50. So I can make a decision here whether to move into a 60 uh, or 70, or I could try to take a little bit off and, and make it uh, Make it lighter, but I think I'm just going to darken it just slightly since we just happen to be on that side. Maybe just a little more. If you have a hard time kind of figuring out, is this darker or lighter? Um, you can use your value checker just to kind of set next to it. And you know, certainly as you do this, you'll say, whoa, that's definitely, this 50 here is definitely darker than this. And then you might say, oh, it's getting closer. That's about right. But when in doubt, just move it around and say, whoa, okay, that's definitely lighter here. So. Maybe if I can't see it exactly, I'll know it's somewhere in that region. Um, and, and that's gonna work. It's gonna start, it's gonna start to train your eye to, to see value. Let's make some lighter values here. in the 40 range there. <clears throat> and in my mixing pile here, and if I know that, hey, this is looking kind of light, I may just grab some of the stuff from the side and the pile to darken it since I know it, it can and will. Just keep moving in that direction. Very good. I think I could try to make one more dark. Um, but as I look at the piece, you know, we're going to be focusing on more mid-range to light values. Let me just, sometimes I just pick some of this up that's left over just so that it doesn't get wasted. Put it up over here. It's a little darker than that. Let's pull in one more. Nice, deep, dark. Get closer to that 90%. But not quite black. There we go. I think that's a really good range. And now, that's set, I've got the color ready color, I should say. We got the grayscale ready. Drawing is a really hard part of any endeavor. Um, it's one of the things that you have to learn most uh, in order to have a successful painting. 
because if you think about a painting as a house, drawing is the foundation. If you build a really great painting on top of a bad foundation, then things are just gonna look strange. There's no way around it. So there are a lot of ways that you, know, you can get around not being the uh, draftsman that you'd like to be, um, but uh, do your best to always be drawing and find out ways that you can improve daily. You know, there's a lot of tutorials out there on YouTube that teach you how to use a comparative method in drawing, how to use plumb lines to measure against, how to use grid systems, um, and even if at need, you could also use a projection. Um, there's a lot of ways you can approach it. I'm just going to, for the purposes of our tutorial, quickly lay out um, a, a white charcoal line drawing, just contour line drawing. It's gonna be a rough sketch, but it's just gonna provide me with a little bit of uh, a map on where to go. And then something that we can talk about that you can see very clearly where I'm going next and uh, as, as we see the cast and as we see what we're working on here. So I'm gonna get started with some drawing. So if I know I'm gonna fit most of the cast into this space, um, I can start by just trying to focus on nothing else but the main shape that I see on the outside. And um, I see mostly a straight line here. It gets, gets a little funny, comes out just a little bit at the way the cast is tilting and maybe ends right there. Got my little broken corner, things break. Um, then I'll do the same down here. So if I, if, I, if I say this was mostly a straight line, I can come here and say, okay, this, this curves up just slightly, uh, but then it drops back down, you know, to here-ish. Just slightly lower. If I, if I compared, I would say, okay, this edge is slightly lower than this edge, and I wanna make sure that I pay attention to that. Same way, moving, moving my way up here. Um, I'd say, you know, this, moves out quite a bit to the side. And then to the brow ridge here. And then the way the cast is tilted, I can see the top. So I'm going to work my way across here. This is a slight U shape. And then we do see some one point perspective as the top of this cast goes back into space. Now that I have the overall shape down, I can look at a few things just to see if, did I get that right? Is the overall height versus width okay? Maybe, I'm close. It's a little wider than what I have it drawn here now that I look at it. So I can, maybe I'll uh, bump this edge out just just slightly, because um, I'm noticing it's not quite right. That'll give us just a little more, I'll have to bring this curve in just slightly. Okay, great, that gives us a little more of the right ratio. Next, I've gotta decide where the, the brow ridge and the eye itself sit within that shape. So if I just see this shape and I'm looking at it, I'll say, okay, the eye is not in the center. What is in the center is kind of the little tear duct, tear pool place is just about dead center, the edge of the eye, if I'm, if I'm looking at it, just about right there. And that gives me a starting point to begin basing the rest off of. Is that wrong? I mean, this might be a little off, and you're right, that's gonna set everything else off, and that's why drawing is, is so important. You wanna take great care in drawing. That being said, I've gotta, I've gotta make some calls, so I've gotta start somewhere. Let's see, maybe it's just a little farther in. And I'm 
I'm looking at these lines and I'm just seeing their angle. Seeing them start to curve. And I'm noticing, okay, the, the brow ridge starts right above the eyelid there. It's just really close. Since I'm seeing a little bit of a top-down view. And you could do a lot with this drawing. You can draw every shadow as you see it and where that shadow ends. Um, that's really valuable. And sometimes I'll just kind of make a note of structurally some of the things that I, that I see happening. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to get too detailed in this. method, you know, if I, if I notice that the edge of my eye comes here, then the eyelid comes about this far out and near that edge where it meets the brow, we have the eyebrow that kind of comes up right at that point. And already I've seen that you know, my drawing is a little off and I've um, made the eye too, too high. So I'm gonna knock it down some. Bring that brow down some. It's not perfect, and the eye is still a little higher than it needs to be, um, giving me kind of a little bit of squash tear, so I won't hit the top exactly like I'd like to, um, but that's all right. The purpose of this is primarily oil painting, not drawing. Um, this is a way you can quickly just compare where is the edge of the eye, where does it line up with the brow. Okay, how high is that in comparison to where the shadow falls? Um, where does the shadow fall when I look at this entire link? Does it go, does it stop here, does it stop here? And anyway, there's so many things you can kind of compare to and, and make, make your judgments from so that you'll eventually say, okay, I think I got it. So you guys probably want to see the actual iris, don't you? Maybe I should put that in. funny shape in here. Okay. Great. So this just serves as a little bit of a guide for me when I start to lay paint down. It's a really quick sketch. It's not perfect. Um, I mean, this is an exercise. You know, we're we're going to try to achieve something that uh, resembles this. We want to focus more on our paint application. We want to focus more on uh, how, how that works. But again, a good drawing equals a good painting in the end. You've got to have a good base. This one might be passable. We'll see how we do. Hope I'm showing you that you don't have to be perfect to begin doing these things. Okay. Let's lay in some paint. Um, the first thing I like to do 
is, is block in. And I need to establish very quickly the darkest area. That's how I start each painting. If I establish the dark, if I establish the black, then I can compare every other value to that black as I put it down. We can also do the same thing with the white. We can lay in the absolute whitest areas we see, the lightest areas. And that way we have these two fixed points that when we begin adding our various grayscale, we can see how close to the white we are, or how close to the black we are in comparison. It's a great way to, to give yourself some key points, some fixed points, so that you don't make mistakes. So as we practiced earlier, I just dipped a little bit uh, of thinner into my brush uh, so I could get some movement uh, of the paint. So I'm gonna start off with my black and find the best areas of black here, which, you know, underneath the shadow, this dark, dark shadow. Shadow stops somewhere in there. And in that way, you know, I've got some nice, good dark in place. I'm gonna do the same with white. It's gonna be fun. Our medium has a little bit of the green from earlier in it. We'll see how that plays out in our grayscale. I'm looking, I'm just scouring the areas of the eye and asking myself, okay, what looks the absolute lightest? And if I carefully look, I see this area on the eyebrow, in the cleft of, kind of the lower eyelid, and maybe here too. Those are the, and uh, maybe the bottom of the eyelid too. I like to use, um, this is just a synthetic brush, but the nice thing about it is it's, it's bigger, I'm gonna block in bigger shapes, and I'm not gonna get caught up with a lot of little, little detail. Um, this is more about finding those major value relationships and adding them in. So again, you saw me uh, just get a little bit of thinner on there so that I could pull, pull the paint and make it a little more viscous so that I could apply it. So let's start by adding some of that really uh, big value change there, almost white to, to black in the shadow. Eyelid here too. Again, this is gonna be rough. We're not trying to get it perfect. We're just trying to find those areas that are really light. And you can see where, again, I didn't use a lot of thinner. I'm keeping it a little thicker. I'm not interested in any, in any washes this time around. I'm laying down a good, good mixture of medium and paint so that it's really, will, will stay in place so that it will be mostly opaque. There are a lot of other techniques in painting you can pursue and you can learn. But right now, we're just going to be work, let's just focus ourselves on uh, learning how medium and inter, uh, and uh, oil paint interact together. This edge is a little light too. And 
very edge of the top here too. So it's good for us to pause there and say, okay, everything else we add in is gonna be somewhere in our grayscale. If you're having a hard time figuring out what to use, you can take the value checker and simply hold it up to, to the next area you're gonna put value in. And you can say, okay, wow, so I'm using, I'm closing one eye and I'm holding my value strip up to what I think is the darkest point in the cast itself, uh, which is three different areas. The area right there and uh, the tear, tear duct, um, and right under the brow here and underneath uh, the eyelid, brow, kind of intersection. Those are the darkest areas. And if I, if I hold my value checker up, it's, it's about a 70 to 80% value in there. I can, I can put that down uh, with confidence. One of the things I like to do is since I don't use, uh, I don't clean up my brushes too terribly much. So I like to keep a few different value brushes. Um, so I've got uh, like a really light value brush, really dark value, and then just kind of a mid-range, which I'll use for, for these. So I'm gonna pick up this one and dig into some of this and just lay it in those spots that I see. It's, it's dark, um, but... And this method, while seemingly piecemeal, really helps you stay on track and not get too far off uh, before things can go south quickly. You can see I'm staying uh, bigger with my brushes, even though there's a lot of detail. I'm using a, a flat. Uh, the flat can, of course, allow me to make a line, as well as I can lay, you know, a full stri stri strip down as well as needed. Tell you what, before we go too much more into uh, the cast itself. Let's just tell a little bit about how the light is falling on the black cloth behind the cast. We don't need to do, we don't need to give this necessarily a lot of detail, um, but again, if I hold my vice strip and I look, you know, even the 90% is almost too light. But we'll go ahead and use that and we'll, we'll go around the whole cast so we have a little a little bit of space that it exists in. And that'll help us too when we start doing our values. If you're doing this for the first time or one of the first times, don't get too beat, don't worry too much. Just have some fun, play in some color, Realize I've got a lot to learn. It's really interesting how the light hitting that area is significantly darker. And if we if we pay attention to that, you know, I've actually it's a little bit lighter here, so I'm gonna dip in my black and go back into that area and just make it a little darker. I think it'll look better. And I can mix into that. And you can see how that's one of the advantages of the always wet nature of oil. If I didn't like how that turned out, I can begin kind of mixing it back into itself right then and there on the canvas.
Notice I'm not using a lot of thinner because this is a dark and I really want it to provide coverage. You know, and if I accidentally bump into the black and pull a little bit of it, I can mix some of that out or I can soften that edge by just bumping into it a little bit, nudging it with the color that I'm placing next to it. What frustrates people about oils is also, you know, its greatest strength is that you get to, you get to continue working into it. Filling in this area. I feel like it needs a little bit more light. I can pull from my 70%, mix it in. You can see that makes a little bit of light shine on that black cloth a little better. I'm just gonna quickly outline this. We're not trying to make a finished painting. Great, we've got a space for it. Um, you know, we can come in, you can see like this space right here, I didn't quite get coverage on the canvas. If I just run my brush over it a little bit, I can do that. Gotta be careful, again, it's wet, it's gonna move. So just take, take care when you're doing it. Okay, let's pop back into the cast and see where we're at. We got in those really dark values. Everything else I see is lighter than, than those areas um, in the eye. I'll just find everything else there. And then I'm gonna fill in. I, I like to, I have a preference of working dark to light. So if those are my darkest points, I know that everywhere else I go, is going to be lighter. Probably would help me right now to mix up just something slightly lighter than the 70 because I, I think I'm probably going to need it. Just adding white until it gets there. Making it a little darker because I went, added too much white. You know, it just doesn't take too much to, uh, to get it there. Sometimes it's barely grabbing just a little bit, especially the little piles that I make. That'd be a really good recommendation. Don't try to make big piles of paint. You'll, you'll run out quickly that way. Keep it small and save your pocketbook. That's just a little darker. Sometimes I just need to put it next to it and see how it turned out. Can't quite see it from this far.
Okay, feel good about that. So I'm going to move into that section next. Uh, then the areas that I see that are dark next to that. I'm going to use my same brush. I can get a little thinner, and I might just wipe it on paper towel to wipe off some of the extra paint. But since I'm going to be close, I don't mind that there's paint in it. So we can begin just blocking in some of these values where they are. And our goal here is to make something that feels like it has volume. We're not aiming for every little thing being right. Something that just sits there. Okay, as I peer around, I think I got about all of that. I'm gonna march towards something just a little lighter. And this side feels like it's about there. Part of the nose seems about that value, and some of the values here. This light, maybe also the same underneath the eyelid here. Not too far. Probably made that a little dark. That's all right. Okay, I'm gonna go a little lighter. Lighter yet. And you know, maybe some of these areas in here. Oops. Close here, up here, this value. And you can carefully and methodically look at your value strip and add it as you see it. Um, and yeah, for the time, I'm just kind of moving from place to place. All right, finding all the value I can. This stage is about blocking in. I'm just trying to pay attention to all the little planes and how the light travels around them. Not thinking of anything else. Moving around, okay, I think maybe go lighter. And we know, we know our white point is there, so we're, we're coming around to it. And then I'm gonna go just another step lighter.
should be starting to see some of the magic unfold here as we as we get rid of all the unpainted areas. Slowly you're gonna find it working, beginning to work. This is the big reveal, as they say. And as you can see, I'm just using little strokes. I'm not trying to run into what I've already painted because it's all wet, it's all moving. Um, I'm just trying to get everything filled in. I'm not gonna be able to make good informed decisions as to what comes next um, until I've got things filled in. Realized I haven't touched the top here yet. And you can see if I my brush hits the black or these darker areas, it just kind of mixes and falls down. Um, so you just kind of watch your edges, get as close as you feel comfortable. We can kind of think about what comes next. Okay, you can see now that I've basically covered everything with oil paint. Um, I had uh, a ground layer that I had already painted on there that had dried, and that just allowed me to not have to paint up against white. I do recommend that with every painting. Now I've tried to capture the major value sh shifts as I see them. Just taking a quick glance, um, I've, I've established something, and this then leaves me some room with, so that I can begin to work. To me, this is where it gets really fun with oils, but also where it can quickly uh, garner frustration. I'm gonna begin working on top of what I've done. And so I've gotta think about 
what's there as something I'm mixing into. So if I know, which I can see already, you know, I've not got these areas as light as they ought to be. And I know I'm gonna have to almost use lots of white by itself, none of these other values that I've mixed, to begin to kind of mix here what I intend it to be. Um, this is a great time too because you can then begin getting, uh, been smoothing some of your brush strokes out, um, buffering here and there, but then also really thinking about how the form uh, of the eye and this, of this cast really works uh, and really thinking about how it sits in space. The next step will be to paint on top of what I've blocked in. Everything is going to be moving, uh, all, all, all the surfaces there, and, um, and, and also what I add in. So think about now we're mixing on top of the painting. At this point too, now that I've done the major blocking in, I don't mind using a smaller brush because the major relationships are in place. I've covered everything with paint, and now I can go back in and get a little more exact with smaller brushes. Um, but avoid it as much as you can, um, because you, you want to focus on the big picture, the big things that tell us about what sh how things are sitting in space. So let's do it. Similarly to um, my dark, light, mid brush on brushes on the bigger, bigger ones. I can do the same here with these mid, these mids, mid-sized brushes. I can, uh, I can do the same with these mid-sized brushes. Have a dark, a light, and a, kind of a, a medium value. And I can even do it with the smaller brushes too. Uh, but we'll probably shift to uh, just a little bit smaller of a brush, and and see where we end up. This is the time where I'm looking back and forth and I'm just moving from place to place, seeing what the problems are. Sometimes I can't quite see what they are because I've got some really jagged edges and um, I can use a little, little buffer brush to just knock down some of these edges, do a little mixing and kind of see, see where I'm at. So I'm gonna start off by using this and just softening some of these edges. Um, but focusing on what I see here, trying to keep that correct. And you can see when I, I softened to this edge, I just took the buffer from the lighter area and I just kind of buffed it until I moved right into the darker shadow and it just smoothed out that transition. It gave me a bit of a gradient. And you can do that just about anywhere can clean off the brush a little bit, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. Gonna, so this edge here that's missing some paint, I'm just gonna use some of the paint that's around it. To, to begin describing it. So in talking about brushes, in some ways, you just want to have a variety. And um, you don't need a brush for all occasions. Like I said, if I was using the flat, I could make both a line and uh, a broad shape or a broad uh, edge or plane of what I'm creating. It does both. Um, you know, to have some rounds are nice because uh, you can you create soft edges with those. These uh, flats create sharper edges. Um, those are things that when you really get into it, you're gonna want to pay attention to. But right now, to have a brush, to learn how to work with oil, to learn how to put it down, that's really the most important part. I would just recommend not using really, really cheap brushes that uh, get splayed easily and that don't hold paint. And you can find good 
good synthetic oil painting brushes just about anywhere, and those are gonna serve you well. They're gonna hold medium, they're also gonna hold paint, and they're gonna allow you to begin to learn uh, how, how to use them. So don't get too wrapped up in having this or that brush. You might find, after you're painting a little while, you know what, I, I think I could use another smaller brush or, um, and so maybe then it's a time to go see if you can find something that is maybe that fit. I just don't think you need to go out and spend a lot of money to have a lot of different cuts of brushes that may or may, you may or may not use. Uh, just get a nice little pack or uh, a handful of varying sizes from small to um, you know, half inch to a little smaller. These are uh, twos, uh, you know, down to, you can just get a little one or, or a zero if you do have some small detail, which we will want to lay in a few little highlights and things like that. And so maybe some of the darker lines we'll just want to clean up with these later. Um, the big deal is not to start with these. Uh, we've got a long road ahead of us if we're just always using, using these. Um, we want to do the big work first of getting everything laid in. Um, people are going to talk about this or that matters, or you should only use this particular medium, or you should only use um, a certain type of brush, and just don't listen to all that. Buy a few things, get used to what you're doing. Um, just make sure you get quality oil paint and a decent brush set, and you're going to be okay. All right, I'm gonna continue to buff here and there. If I see something that really bothers me, I can begin laying it in. Just because I'm doing it this way, it's not a hard and fast rule, and um, you're gonna find many other people say, hey, you know, you ought to do it a different way. And I could use these flats and continue to kind of play with some of these angles and achieve the same thing. Right now, I just wanna clean it up a little bit so that I can see uh, what areas definitely need attention and what areas are, uh, are doing okay as they are. Largely, in representational painting, I would just like you to think more of volume rather than small detail and getting too wrapped up in the little things and missing uh, the big relationships that, uh, that help really tell us about space and how things work.
again, when thinking about these, you really want to think about what's the important information, what's not. To me, the, the, the true artist understands that difference. Um, what, are, what are the important parts that I really need to include and what is uh, unimportant? Um, and as a painter, that's, that's what you really want to learn. So I am going to get the small brush here just because I need to tell a little bit better about this edge. It's, kind of, it's an important part. And then also the way it flows into here. Similarly, you know, we've lost some of our really clear lines up here. It happens. It just needs to, just gotta come in and clean it up a little bit. You see, I painted that directly on top of the other, and you can see how it mixed. Might need to pull in a little bit darker of a value in order to overcome what's there. And then what that, that does is shows me where I've got to go next. Use my other sort of mid size brush. The great thing about oils is you can continue to play with it if I, I want to add more you know, lighter areas and in here, you know, I can do it. I can just take some of the white and just begin building it up. But as I do that, I'm creating more and more paint on the surface. And again, it will be increasingly harder to overcome if I need to go back over it. So you do have to make just some decisions with care. Um, but also, you don't have to just make it mud either. So one of the big things that as I look at this, there's a lot of light falling here that I just hadn't captured. So it was important to kind of come back into that. A little bit here on the nose, definitely here on the edge. And as you can see, I'm just dipping directly into white it's not turning out white um, because it's mixing in with what's there. Uh, it's not a problem. It's, it's how oil works. It's important to cover everything up as much as you can too. So these little areas and edges that I don't quite have paint on yet, do make it not as effective in space. And so it is important to make sure that is, is nice and covered. So you can see how thickly I'm beginning to lay down this white. I have to do that if I'm going to overcome. And I'm using a very harsh angle here too if I'm going to paint over what's there so that it doesn't mix too much. And I, this is a time where I bounce around a lot. Um, I'm looking to see what, what I've gotten right, wrong. 
I'm looking to see what seems like it's really sitting in space and what's not. Um, Almost in every painting you make, you're gonna find that there comes a moment where you're like, "Uh, I don't, I don't like it." Um, and when that happens, uh, on the other side of that, if you stick it out, is is success and and victory. Um, but you do have to be willing to face it and and move move through that part. So, kind of entering that part right now, where I'm like, mm, I don't really like it. Nothing's really exciting me about it. Uh, it has problems, um, and it's just not quite there yet. We've got a little bit of reflected light. Um, it's the light that's hitting here is coming up and reflecting on the bottom of the brow. And we want to make sure we describe that. Um, that's an, an important part of painting. It's an important part of painting what we see. I'm just slowly modeling. I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, what's darker, lighter, and then adding those, those as I see them. Uh, am I making mistakes sometimes? Yep, always. Uh, but, uh, but that's all right. We're working toward capturing this and getting it with success. There's going to be discouragement along the way. You can count on it. This is kind of a part where I like to keep all my value brushes right at hand, and I just want to keep making subtle adjustments here and there until I until I end up liking what I'm doing. I'm 
get another good time to kind of work in the buffer a little bit and clean up some, some areas here and there. I'm just going to clean up a few edges here so that we are a little smoother. I mean, I'm not really happy with it at all, but <laughs> but I'm also trying to keep it tight, keep it done, you know, not too long. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, if I turn on the what, it, like, it looks good. It looks more even. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to decide how much more time I'm going to give this um, before it gets there. Um, when, at what point do I just kind of stop them and say, hey, uh, um, if, I, if I gave it another you know, hour, you know, this is the degree to which we would take it. And um, but for our purposes here, you know, we've kind of set up, come and set up what we came to do. Thing. I feel like if you were to, if I see like two things maybe, mm -hmm. yep. that are missing or that are not like yep. 
No, you're good. That's good. There's the way that the brow is an indentation here, where like this kind of can look like a big blob, but there's a little more shape to it. Mm -hmm. And then the line around the eye is much more. It kind of defines here's where the eye is on the right. actual cast. That's not in the right. So I don't know if that's even something. That's pretty small, so I don't know if that's something that you would even describe. Or I would, I would if I, yeah, if I took it, if I was going to take it all the way. Um, so. Part of what I'm seeing too is uh, I've got to darken under here as well. I mean, that's what I know will make this feel more. This needs to be darkened, and then so let's just sit here, spending some time with it. I could try to get some of those little details in. Here's where I've really got a question. You know, how much more um, are we going to do to to achieve the goal here? And you know we could fiddle a long time, uh, but really the purpose was to show you here's how oil moves around. Um, you use that to your advantage. You you move into it um, in order for, in order for it to uh, kind of mix on on the canvas. If you if you're making changes, um, you try not to get too worried about it. If it does. You can create some really interesting things, and you don't need to do a whole lot. You don't need to get all really wrapped up in, in the little, little details. Try to include some here and there, just, just to say, okay, yeah, you can, you know, draw the edge of this eye if you want, you know. Um, but. Again, it's not something you, you know, we're getting into really little, little, little fine details. And I'd much rather the beginner learn to do on, focus on the major planes and, and matching values. And I get too wrapped up in the little things um, because it's those little things we try to describe rather than the big shape planes that really get us into trouble and, and a painting is not working and we don't know why. It's because we focus too much on little things. Um, work on this brow just a tad. tad. I've already put quite a bit of paint down, so I can I can keep doing that, but I'm I'm just barely putting it over the top of this, you know, raking because it's already it's got a lot of body there. It's a lot of paint there. It's it's gonna move if I do anything else to it, which is okay. Um, you can create those effects too by allowing some thicker paint in some areas that can actually create a little bit of 3D effect even though you're using a two-dimensional medium. The last thing I'm going to try to do is just describe the shadow as it comes all the way down to here. And the shadow.
Okay. Oh, I'll give you a second. Here, let me. I'll do one more thing. I do. Might be good. I think that's a good point. All right, very good. I've achieved basically what I set out to do, which was mix some values, look carefully, draw, and then lay out some some of the major shapes I see. Um, if I were to spend another hour or so on it, I think I would get it to a place of slower, you know, more and more refinement. It would just, it would just take time and we could sit here for a long time watching that. Or we could just go ahead and stop it right here and say, for the most part, things are working, they're sitting in space, uh, so we're gonna pause there. Um, one of the things about working from life early on is that, you know, our eyes are gonna be more better. <clears throat> our eyes are gonna be better than any uh, camera, you know, by far. We're gonna see subtleties that we could only see in the space, in the light, just right. Um, you're gonna have to carefully set up some of those spaces in order for you to have the same light that falls on what you're working on, as well as your uh, subject, um, but it can be well worth it. Once you have done a lot of training from life, you're able to work from photographs in a different way. You're able to focus on the things that you know are going on volumetrically. Otherwise, it's uh, a 2D object that you're trying to create another 2D object on, and you're just gonna lose information. That's the, that's the big part. It's the biggest thing. So I'd recommend if you have the opportunity and you have the facility to really work from, from life if you can. Um, do I still see problems with this piece? Absolutely. Um, and it pains me to stop right here before I've worked all of those out. Um, but uh, it's good to know that, hey, when, when you get it, it's good, you can just kind of walk away when the, when the major things that need to be explained are. Um, don't know what else I ought to say. Let me break it up and let me say, working with oils is not as complicated as you might think. We've got a really wet painting here I'm gonna have to set it aside for a couple of days uh, in order for that to dry if I wanted to go back on top of it. And uh, you know, and I might. Um, but uh, right now it is what it is. You know, if I, if I rub, rub my hand against it, you know, I totally, I totally ruin it. And it would be really hard to fix. And so, as we said earlier, you know, you can always wipe it out if there's a problem. Um, and start all over if you really wanted to. You know, we could do the same thing here. Um, one of the things that have happened, and the reason why I've had to put so much thick white down is because I started off too dark. And that is a tendency that I know I, I personally have. And only when you paint are you gonna begin to see, okay, that is what I do. I, I tend to make things darker than they are initially. Um, and that's good to know because then you can begin to plan for that at a later date. All right, you just saw this painting get finished. It's all done, I've varnished it, it's ready to go. Um, this painting can be yours. All you have to do is head over to my Patreon, become a patron before October 1st. There'll be a drawing on October 5th and you can win this very piece. Please sign up and I hope you're the winner. I hope this is helpful. Oil painting is not daunting if you take it a step at a time. If you have questions or any other comments, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. 
If you'd like to see my recommendations on what paint to buy, what brushes, what medium I use, head on over to patreon.com slash EVWIII where you can see that information as well as download your very own template to print out a value checker that you can use at home in your painting. Hello, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful toward your goals of becoming the artist you're meant to be. Here's some other videos you might like and click over here to subscribe. If you want to see the channel flourish and ensure continued content, share this with a friend or join my Patreon link below. And remember, never stop painting.